Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So let me give you an update on our container garden and I'll show you what's worked well and what's not worked so well, what's gone to plan and what hasn't gone to plan. So come on, let's give you an update on this. So if you start at the top section of the garden, um, we've got these potatoes can be harvested at any time now. These are second early potatoes uh, and they were planted in about Mar February, late February, March time, early March, that sort of time. They're about ready to be harvested any time. The plants are starting to die back. What we're doing with our container potatoes is any time that we, we're going to cook something, we'll just pull them out of the ground. Because remember, the best place to store potatoes is in the soil. And that's one of the things that we try and do, keep the potatoes in the ground as long as possible. And then when we pull them, they're completely fresh and we can use them straight off. So these are my dwarf fruit trees that I planted last year. They're all coming on quite well. This cherry tree did flower. I mean, those flowers haven't stuck and we haven't got any fruit on it, but that's a positive sign that the cherry tree did actually flower. Um, the apple tree is getting a little bit big. The peach tree that's in the greenhouse, it's absolutely huge. I'll show you a picture of that. Um, but that's all part of our container garden. We've got another pot, pot of potatoes and what we did with these potatoes, a lot of them are staggered plantings. So that's an earlier planted one that's dying back. This is this one we can harvest a little bit later. So we did, you know, we planted them in about two week intervals so we can get that staggered harvest all the way through. This is interesting. We've got dugi, uh, which also know, it's a type of callaloo or amaranth. And this is an absolute favourite in our family. So what we'll do is when they get a little bit bigger, we'll start transplanting some of them and moving them in other places. We've got an absolutely amazing blueberry harvest this year. So this is the first year that we're going to have a really good blueberry harvest. These are plants from Wilco's, so they were only a couple of pounds per plant, but there's a lot on them this year. And they're blue and they're Patriot variety. So. Uh, I've heard quite a few people have had success with Patriot variety. I've grown the blueberries from Poundland a few times and I've had failure after failure but these Wilco variety that I planted two years ago have come on really well. Here we've got a tray of coriander and what we do with coriander is as soon as we plant a tray we're germinating more seeds. Don't worry about coriander bolting. The way to deal with it is to plant little and often and take two harvests so as soon as they get to yay high and you've harvested them, cut them back, they'll grow again, take the second harvest and then leave them to bolt. You can get seeds from them if you want or you can just pull the whole plants out and um, replant. These carrots have come on absolutely amazing so we're getting some good harvests. Uh, we should get some good harvest from them in a couple of, in maybe about a month's time. And I've got a second sowing of carrots here and I'm having a nightmare with cats. I left this uncovered and as you can see, there's some cat poo in there. So I need to get rid of that. And whenever the cats come, they always sort of dis scratch everything up. I scattered these carrot seeds out quite nicely and they've all sort of accumulated into one area because the cat's been scratching. I'm not sure what else these things are that's germinating. I'll give it a couple of days. If it's worth keeping, I'll keep. Otherwise I'll pull them as well. And where we've got gaps, so if we end up with gaps like this area here that's got gaps, I'll sow a few extra seeds. But we'll wait and see. With my carrot boxes, the mix that I use is a 50-50 mix of compost and sharp sand. So sift the compost down using probably a quarter inch sieve and sharp sand mixed together 50-50 and that'll give you a nice compost, uh, you know, a nice mix for growing carrots in. So because this is homemade compost, we do get some weeds germinating. Um, so they, they need to, we'll pull those out because they'll just compete for nutrients. Um, this box is actually a box of chilies and because we haven't had the warm season that we were expecting, uh, it, they've, they've just been a little bit stunted, they're all a little bit behind. I'm hoping the weather's going to improve and now that the weather improves everything's just going to start waking up and it's just going to take off again. That's what I'm hoping for and that's what the theory is. So let's see if I can match the reality with the theory. My broad beans have come on quite nicely. They actually need staking. What I did, I did a second sowing of broad beans at the front so I get a later harvest and they're coming on. But they're bit, because I've been neglecting it a little bit, they've been overshadowed a little bit from the old broad beans. There's a plant with actual black fly on. This is one of the things that I do actually benefit from in the way I plant in my in the rest of my garden is I do a lot of companion planting and 
we're gonna have to pinch that off and get rid of all those black fly. It's the first time I've seen black fly on broad beans in my garden for many, many years. And simply because I've not used my companion planting just there. The way I'm gonna tie these back, I'm just gonna knock up a little frame. So a couple of sticks in. So sticks into the ground. And then something across the top. There we go. So you don't have to be fancy. Look at what I'm using for the tie, for the sticks and the supports. I'm just using a branch from uh, Privets. So whenever you do any yard trimmings, do make sure that you take uh, these, you know, any sort of useful branches that you can use again and keep them to one side because they all, co all come in handy. And if they don't, you can just compost them. So now we move on to my bathtub. It's growing really well, but as with most of my garden this year, there's a little bit of neglect. What I wanted to do was by this time, I wanted to have a, a trellis that stretched over the top of here that I could have my bean plants climbing over the top. But I've just not been able to do it. I've just been really struggling with work and trying to, and trying to get the hours in at work and trying to catch up with stuff that I've just not been able to catch up with, uh, keep the garden up to date. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mock up a slightly different improvised trellis because at the moment I've just got the bean plants climbing up canes and they're getting a little bit floppy. So they're not gonna be too stable. So we'll mock up something a little bit more improvised a little bit more, um, you know, just so we can, just so we can get through this season, and maybe next season I'll put on a proper canopy and I'll do everything else that I wanted to do. So this courgette plant has established itself absolutely beautifully. It's come on really nicely now. Uh, it's turning into a bit of a monster. I underestimated uh, some of the plantings in this container. You can see some of the yellow courgettes. This is a, this is a golden variety of courgette. Uh, and we're gonna get a couple ready to harvest soon. Just sometimes you might get some uh, plants that are not quite uh, being pollinated at the start and they look like, it looks like blossom end rot and they start to fall off quite young, but that's just poor pollination. What normally happens is the females turn up first and the males always turn up late. So uh, you, you just gotta be a little bit patient and just allow everyone to get to the party at the same time. Um, but let me show you the mistake I've made with this. What I expected was the courgette plant not to grow as fast as the bean plant. I expected the broad bean plant to grow a little bit faster. So in theory what's happening is I've got my broad beans in, so I've got a couple of broad beans in, and they'll grow straight up. Basically I wanted my broad bean plant to be up here by now. So what I should have done was I should have planted the broad bean first and then put the courgette in. So I've got my height on the broad bean established before my courgettes getting established. So that's a little bit of a mistake that I've made there. But you can see they're coming on and I will get two crops out of it. They do seem like they had some sort of shock when, the, when I first planted them out. But they've got themselves established and they're doing all right now. I mean, trimming these leaves back is not a problem at all. It does sometimes just encourage that little bit of airflow. And these older leaves especially, they've done their job. Uh, look at the difference between the chilli plants and this one, and the chilli plants at the back. Now I plant, planted these chilli plants a lot later, so I let them get established for a bit longer in the greenhouse before I planted them out. And they just look a lot healthier that I planted them a little bit later out once they're a little bit stronger. Those got planted and then got hit by the cold and that's what stunted them. So that's a little bit of a learning lesson for everyone. My lettuce, these have given me a great harvest. So if you look at the way that we're, we're picking, we're just picking off leaves from the outside. Every few days, we're, every day we're coming in and getting an absolutely fantastic harvest from each plant. But some of these plants are now looking like they're getting a bit tired and a bit spent so um, what, we, what we're going to do is with these lettuce and with this one in this container that's that suffered a little bit from uh, slug attacks pull these plants so these plants that are completely gone we'll pull them we'll take the leaves that are good 
and we'll replant again. But we're still going to get a really nice harvest, a really nice salad for our lunch. Um, and we'll do the same thing with here. We're probably about two or three, we'll, we'll keep pulling uh, from there. We're probably a few weeks away from them being harvested. And there's replacement younger plants here that once they're harvested, we'll just pick them out and put them in place and they'll just get established and they'll continue giving us that harvest. Everything in the bathtub is under planted. So we've got the beans growing up. We've got lettuce as ground cover. There's loads of lettuce that we're picking and harvesting. There's radishes that are growing in and we're taking them. There's even some sawtooth coriander so um, if you've heard of this, this is cool Lantro. There's one of, one of the people in our Facebook group that calls it Shadow Baby or something like that. Um, absolutely lovely name. Uh, if I've mashed the pronunciation, then I'm, I do apologize. Yeah, there's aubergines in here that'll do well. We've got tomatoes, we've got chilies. Everything's, it's a good mix of everything. Yeah, let's see what I can do with them. Probably in my next garden video, I'll give you an update of where I'm at with these, broad, with these runner beans and we'll get them up to date and we'll get them you know, fixed up. But there's a little tour of my container garden. For So far my budget, I set myself a budget of 50 pounds at the start of the year. I've spent nowhere near that. All the compost has been homemade. Um, the only thing that anyone would have spent some money on here is seeds. These containers are all free. If you get looking, you get, if you get out and get looking, you can find these containers for free. And if you start straight away, you can be making compost you know, all the time, all the time, you know, collecting material from anywhere you can get it. Any kitchen scraps that you get in, collect them. Any yard prunings, collect them. If you can't collect them yourselves, tell your neighbours, you know, grow a few things and share a little bit with your neighbours and your neighbours will be more than happy to share with you as well. At the end of the day, their yard prunings are ending up in the bin. If they give them to you, you can put them to some use. They'll be more than happy to. So I'm quite happy with the way my container garden's growing even though I'm a little bit behind with where I wanted to be with getting all the infrastructure in place. Let's see what I can do today. Um, I might just skip a day from work and get on with this, but I need to get paid at the same time. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi